It started as a horror story worldwide that settled in England by 1796. Edward Pestilence, Outbreak, and Death. It was the smallpox epidemic. Make this stop! Story. My life can't be in Max, okay? What if I told you this story has a good ending? It begins with trying to improve upon an ancient method called variolation. Very, 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 variolation. That's the ancient method of inoculating an uninfected person with smallpox virus in the hope that a protective infection will result in immunity against the disease. This was widely used before the creation of a vaccine. It was practiced in China, India, the Middle East, and Africa before it came to England. But there was a big problem with variolation. You see, the practice exposed a person to the most dangerous part of a pathogen, an unaltered live version of the microbe. Because of this, it could be as deadly as the disease itself. There were scientists like Edward Jenner of England who were trying to solve the problem of smallpox without exposing people to the harmful effects of variolation. <laughs> But why was England the epicenter of this research? The major reason was that in the 18th and 19th centuries, Britain had an empire that stretched from Europe and Africa into Asia, Australia, islands in the Pacific, and the Americas, including the Caribbean, North America, including the countries of the United States, and Kenneth. So what became the standard in Britain became the standard for much of the known world. I made some observations. Jenna noticed that the skin of those infected with smallpox had pox marks. However, the skins of milkmaids were often quite smooth and unblemished. Because they worked closely with cows, milkmaids were often exposed to a mild cowpox infection. After the, the infection, they were often immune to the more deadly smallpox. Genetically, cowpox and smallpox are in the same virus family. They have few differences, but the differences they do have make one mildly infectious to humans, while the other one is quite deadly. I have a hypothesis. Jenna hypothesized that the pustules of milkmaids who were infected with cowpox could confer immunity to smallpox, therefore creating the concept of a vaccine. Jenna tested his hypothesis by doing a series of experiments. He went into the fields and collected pustules from the blisters of milkmaids newly infected with cowpox. This was done on the basis of cowpox and smallpox being genetically related. Cowpox could stand in for smallpox and prompt the immune system to mount a defense even against smallpox. On May 14, 1796, Dr. Jenna infected James Phipps, his gardener's son, with the cowpox virus. As a result, James had a fever, which means the immune system mounted a defense against the cowpox infection. The exposure to cowpox helped to prime the immune system for future infection. His fever subsided in a few days. Weeks later, in July of that year, Dr. Jenner exposed James to an unchanged, potent sample of the smallpox virus. Nothing. Just as I predicted. After being exposed to the smallpox virus, James did not have a fever and he had no signs of contracting the smallpox disease. This was phenomenal because smallpox infected 6 out of every 10 people and killed 10 to 20 percent of the population. Then everyone got vaccinations and everybody was happy. Um, no. Unfortunately, anti-vaccine feelings are nothing new. When people found out that vaccine was derived from cow material, they began writing that people would start growing cow appendages or begin to grow cow heads. People also wrote that it was wrong for Jenna to 
vaccinate other people for his vaccine trials, which included his own family. And when they heard that Jenna vaccinated his 11-month-old son, Robert, well, they were really up in arms. Vaccination, however, proved successful. By 1840, vaccination was widely accepted. Thank you. Also, in 1840, the British government banned variolation and provided vaccination using cowpox free of charge. Jenner's theory of vaccine also started a new field of study in biological sciences and medicine, immunology. The study of your immune system, because it's all your immunity. <laughs> <laughs>